Hey, this is Johnny, and welcome to Bears and Games. Today, we're going to be talking about a Sega game. We talk about a lot of Sega games. What do you want? Dream? Excitement? Technology? 30-second intro to a company name? And... Upside down and in the heart. I give it. I am... Sega. Sega! Yeah, that, that's a bit too long there, Sega. So, Yakuza, or Yakuza, is a crime game, which I thought originally was going to be a boring GTA-style uh, ripoff by Sega. It's the story of this guy, Kazuma Kiryu. As you can see, he's a Tojo clan affiliate Dojima family soldier. Uh, everyone gets introductions like that. And uh, you are basically start off as a footman uh, for the... Uh, Yakuza group you're in, the uh, Dojima family, and then you go around uh, Tokyo, uh, well actually a part of Tokyo, I think it's Shibuya or something, I, I don't know, uh, and it's actually full of realistic stores and arcades, it's sort of based on, on that one part of, of Tokyo, uh, but it's not quite an exact street for street thing, but there are real stores like this one's uh, Don Quixote, and that is apparently what it's like inside, although now I am terrified of going to Japan because it all looks so claustrophobic. There's also Club Sega arcades, and since this is sort of a spiritual successor to uh, Shenmue, Shen, Shenmue uh, I, I thought, hey, maybe you can play that version of Virtual Fighter, but you can't. Uh, so it's got an open world sort of look to it, but it's actually more of an RPG, uh, including like a journal friend. and lots of missions. And you're taking care of, in the main plot, this uh, little girl, uh, Haruka, who you are taking into all sorts of unsavory situations because you basically become her adopted kind of father. Sir, are you babysitting? Nah, take your daughter to work day. Oh, you're so hilarious. And uh, also there's uh, Yaktuza here, which has a much, much better, uh, still incredibly long Sega intro. But this one's sort of Okami-esque, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's, that's much better. See, look at that. Oh, except for that impact font they used right there. So Yaktuza is pretty much more the same, but with one big change. That's right, people smoke in this game. Now, uh, you might be wondering why I've brought this game to the Bears and Games podcast, and that is because there are a lot of bears in it. From tall, slim bears to huge, chubby bears, this game is full of pretty much every type of bear. I mean, you gotta like Asian guys, but, uh, hey, oh yeah, and be okay with kind of thinking that PS2 era chunky polygon models are interesting, but... Even if you aren't going to this game for the eye candy, it's kind of fun that this game has a gameplay mechanic that actually takes into uh, account the size and height of the guy you're fighting. Now, with, say, a guy like this... Oh yeah, there's some loading times for you. Uh, say with a guy like this, he's a big, tall man. So you can't actually just run up and start throwing him, which is one of the major moves of the game. Uh, instead, you can choke him a bit, but uh, big guys will... Uh, fight back and often just crush you if you try to pick them up. Uh, there is a leveling up system. You'll notice that uh, green bar at the top that says 5. You can actually use that to uh, up your skills. And the game wastes no time in introducing a large assortment of large men, including some big and tall guards who tend to stand around and look ominous until you fight them. Uh, there's lots of tattooed muscle guys since it's the Yakuza and tattoos are part of uh, the Yakuza culture. Uh, one of my favorites is one of the big bad guys from Yakuza who looks like a big bear version of Bosch from Final Fantasy XII. But either way, when you get into fights, there's going to be big guys because they add an element of challenge. Uh, usually they'll be surrounded by a lot of smaller guys you can throw around as much as you like, but the bigger guys are uh, tougher, but as you level up, they become more fun and easy to deal with. There's some awesome moves you can use against them. Uh, now you'll notice the Mammoth here is actually one of the easier fights in the Coliseum, but uh, if you do the Coliseum minigames, you'll get to fight against Daniel Feldman, who is 
second hottest guy in the game? Oh, maybe the hottest guy in the game. He is pretty amazing. Although, it could just be because I like guys in singlets. One thing when you do play this game, just be uh, ready for some random encounters. A lot of random encounters. Think of it as an RPG, and these are the level grinding kind of deals that you'll have to do to get through the game, and you won't be so mad. And now let's end with what looks like getting fellatio from the fat guy. Arr.